One kid killing the parents is a bad seed. Two kids killing the parents is a bad family. You testified before that you had nightmares when you were a child, sometimes for two, three months in a row. Is that right? Yes. And do you recall any times when you would leave, do you recall leaving your bed, like sleepwalking? Yeah, I, I had a strange thing with sleepwalking. Sometimes I'd be aware of it, and sometimes I wouldn't. Did your mother have a particular way in which she would arouse you or wake you from your nightmares? Yes. And what was that method? Uh, she'd put me in the bathtub underneath the cold water. And how did, would you feel it when she was putting you in the bathtub? I thought she was part of the, the, the nightmares that I was having, and I thought she was one of the um, monsters that was getting me, and I would fight against her, and so she'd have to drag me to the um, bathtub. What was your first waking awareness when this would happen? Being in the bathtub with the cold water. So you'd be clothed or naked or what? I would be in my underwear and my t-shirt. In a tub of cold water? Yes. Do you recall um, being sent by your mother to, uh, strike that, being sent by your parents to sports camp? Yes. And do you recall um, a year when you were sent to the Lawrenceville tennis camp? Yes. Did you want to go? No. Did you make the fact that you didn't want to go known to either of your parents? Uh, yes, it was really my mother who was doing the sending. My dad had just said, you're going, so that was it. All right, please specify when. Okay, do you recall in 1980, when you were going on 10, being sent to Lawrenceville? <laughs> yes. And um, did you let your mother know that you didn't want to go? Yes. Did you get sent anyway? Yes. Was this an occasion when you were being sent to camp and your brother was not going to the same camp? Yes. Your Honor, I have a question, but I'd like to more. Now, in that letter, does your mother make reference to your attitude about going to camp? She actually calls for you to say, sustain. Your Honor, it's to show the state of mind of the declarant. Do you uh, recall what, uh, what it was like at the Lawrenceville tennis camp for you? Yes. And what was your reaction to being at that camp? I, I had to sleep there, and I didn't want to sleep there alone because they made me sleep in a bed. Um, apparently, the person that was supposed to be in the same room with me didn't show up, so I had to sleep there alone. Why didn't you want to sleep there alone? I don't know. It was just I didn't like uh, sleeping in a foreign place alone. It was just scary to me. Okay. So did you try to communicate with your mother? <coughs> Yes, I told her this, and the first night. And? I called her, and I said, I can't, I can't sleep here. I'm very scared. And she said, it's a sleepover camp. You have to sleep there. And uh, did you have any e other efforts to contact her? Yes, I called her several times the first night because I couldn't sleep. I was having bad nightmares. And uh, she just told me to stop embarrassing her because there are people around and just to sleep there, and she'll deal with me in the morning. And did you call her the next morning? Yes. And uh, did she talk to you then? Yes. And what was the, what were the conversations like the next morning? Uh, the next morning, she said that she would be there in the afternoon to uh, to deal with me. She was not happy, and uh, I told her that I would try to make it through, um, but it was just difficult for me to sleep there at night. Now, had you been to a camp before this? Yes. You remember your brothers testifying that he would get very homesick and lonely at <coughs> camp, and call home. Yes. And that your mother would. Uh, refused to accept his calls? Yes. Did anything like that ever happen to you? Yes. And was that at the same camp that your brother was at or a different camp? We were at the same camp. So did she refuse to accept collect calls from you as well? Yes. Um, I would call her uh, several times uh, and ask her if I could come home. And eventually she just started refusing the calls. Now, on this occasion, though, when you were at Lawrenceville by yourself, uh, did she accept all your calls? Yes. And did she wind up coming to get you? Yes. And what was her demeanor, and how did she talk to you when she came to get you? She was extremely unhappy and uh, would grab me by the arm and put me in the car and uh, 
we drove away. I didn't even stay the entire uh, camp, I don't believe. Well, how many days were you there? I was only there one night, but I don't believe I ever went back to the camp during the day. In other understand. words, it was a sleepover camp, but you could stay there during the day and just, I mean, just stay there during the day and not sleep overnight. And, In other uh, words, you could sleep at home at night? Yes. But she never took you back there? I don't believe so. Well, did she say anything to you when she was picking you up about how it made her feel? Yes, yeah, she said she was extremely embarrassed and that, uh, just that she was very embarrassed and she was very upset. She was embarrassed about what? about the fact that I would call her and, and was too much of a sissy to be able to sleep at night, that her own son was not able to do that. Now, Mr. Menendez, focusing you, focusing you on the years in Pennington, was it routine for your mother to drive you to school in the morning? Yes. Was it typical for her to pick you up after school? Yes. And generally speaking, uh, did she tend to have the same demeanor or be in the same kind of mood uh, on most days when she'd pick you up from school? Yes. And could you describe for us what her mood would be like on most days when she picked you up from school? Very rushed, very frazzled, um, uh, very upset. Did you know what she was upset about? No. Uh, she was upset. She was almost always upset whenever Dad wasn't around. Um, and, and she was just upset almost every day of her life. And how would she, what was her mood or attitude towards you and your brother? She was, she took it out on us. Well, what do you mean she took it out on you? Well, she would pull up to the curb in a hurry. She drove real fast and she would screech to the curb and she would tell us to get in and then she would drive us. We had to go to tennis and Northeast Racquet Club uh, for a long time. And, uh, <coughs> and she would be real harsh in the car. Whenever we made a sound, she'd tell us to shut up or she would swing around and hit us. And we just had to be still in the car most of the time because most of the time she was upset and she didn't want anything to bother her, especially Lyle and I. So did you enjoy these rides with your mother in the afternoons? No, I hated it. I, I much preferred it when I was able to take the bus every once in a while. And how would she drive? She drove very fast. And was fast the only distinctive characteristic of her driving? Fast, reckless. She just, she was always late, so she was always in a hurry to get some places. So she would run stoplights if no one was coming, and she would do different things. Did she ever drive in a way that made you feel your life was in danger? Yes. And what were those things that she did? I remember many times she was not concentrating or paying attention and getting on to, uh, in New, New Jersey, they had highways where you actually just got on through a stoplight. And she would go on the wrong side of the road and we would be screaming or she did, wouldn't see a stoplight and so she would slam on her brakes and the car would do a 180. A 180? It would turn all the way, almost facing the other direction by the time the steering wheel stopped. It was a big station wagon. And would you try to, uh, to say things to her about her driving? Mom, slow down. Mom, you're on the wrong side of the road. Anything? Well, when we were on the wrong side of the road, yes. Otherwise, definitely not. Because when you said something, she just snapped at you. She got really uh, harsh with you. Did you understand as a child what it was that was making your mother so angry at you? No, I had no idea. Now, you mentioned at one point in your testimony that um, your mother would make you take the blame for things. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, is there an incident that you remember like that involving tennis rackets? Yes. Okay. Now, okay. Could you tell us about that incident? Um, First of all, how old were you when this particular incident occurred? I believe I was 12. Okay. And, uh, she had forgotten uh, my tennis rackets. We were on the way to a tennis tournament. It was a Friday afternoon because it was the first round. It was right after school. And I had to uh, obviously have my tennis rackets. But what she'd do is she'd pick me up from school with my tennis clothes if I wasn't wearing them that day and my tennis rackets. And uh, on the way there, I noticed that she had forgotten the tennis rackets. What were you doing on the way there? I was changing, I believe. In the car? Yes. 
And you noticed that your tennis rackets weren't there? Yes, I looked in the back where they usually were to make sure she had the right rackets and this and that, and there were no rackets. And what did that mean to you? That meant that I was going to probably have to borrow somebody else's racket. I said, I But said, what did that mean to you? It meant I was probably going to lose. Why? Because tennis rackets are very specialized, and if you don't have your own strung at the right tension and the right size and the right grip, you're not going to play nearly as well. And what did it mean to you that you knew in advance or thought in advance that you were going to lose? What consequences, if any, would that have for Well, you? if I lost first round in, in the Middle States tournaments, I was going to be punished by Dad, and I was afraid of that. Okay. So when you noticed that the rackets were missing, what, if anything, happened? I, I asked Mom where the tennis rackets were. I said, Mom, where are the tennis rackets? And she said, oh, aren't they back there? And uh, I said, no, they're not back here. And she says, well, you're just going to have to borrow a racket when you get there. Okay. And what happened? <coughs> I lost. Did you borrow a racket when you got there? Yes. And you lost? Yes. And was there a conversation with your mother in the car on the way home? Yeah, I wanted to know what we were going to say to Dad, because I, was, I believe I was seated number two in this tournament. I was one of the top four, and, uh, and I lost in the first round. And I wanted to know what we were going to say to Dad, because... Well, what do you mean? Why, why wasn't Dad just going to be told your mother forgot the rackets and you couldn't win playing with a different racket? I, I was going to find out if that's what was going to be said. I was asking Mom, what are we going to say, Dad? What are we going to tell Dad happened? She said, well, you're just going to have to say you forgot the rackets. There's nothing else we can say. I couldn't just tell him that I played badly. Uh, there had to be a reason why I lost to this unranked kid. Well, was it because you played badly or was it because you didn't have your rackets? Well, was, I played badly because I didn't have my rackets. And so I was asking her, what are we going to do? And she said, you're just going to have to say you left him at school. She didn't say, I'll say I forgot them. Well, I, I asked what, I said, Dad's not going to be very happy that I left my rackets at school, and she got really angry. Uh, she was angry that I lost, and she got really angry. She said, well, we're not going to say that I left my rackets. We're not going to say what, you popped? She, she said that she wasn't going to say that, that I definitely couldn't say that she had left her rackets at home, because Dad was going to be even less happy with her than angry with me. Is that what she said? Yes. What did you expect your father to do if he heard that you lost the first round of this tournament because you had left your rackets at school? Who did? I was 12. What did you expect your father to do? I thought he was going to use the belt. And do what with it? And hit me. So uh, did you say to your mother, but, but mother, if if you tell dad that I lost the rackets, he's going to beat me with the belt. Did you say that to her? No, definitely not. I, well, I was why didn't you say that to her? Because, because mom was the one that usually told on me anyway when bad things happened so that she wouldn't get punished. And I definitely wasn't going to say, mom, if you do this, dad's going to use the belt on me because she'd go right home and say that I told her that to dad. I don't understand. She'd go right home and tell Dad what? That I told her that. That you complained about his beating you? Yes. And that you just didn't do. Well, had you ever had a conversation with your father about whether or not your mother was a friend? Yes. And do you recall how old you were approximately when you had that talk with your father? I, that was right around when the um, violent stuff started to happen. I was 11. Okay. And what was the nature of that conversation with your father? I mean, what was it that was said generally? Well, Dad was telling me not... Is it offered for the state of mind of the witness? Yes, it is, Your Honor. It'll be received for that purpose only. Thank you. Dad was telling me not to tell Mom something. I don't remember what it was. The only thing that stuck out is that he said to me, um, Mom's not your friend, she's mine. Just remember that. Remember that for what purpose? Never to tell Mom anything that happened between Dad and I or complain to Mom because Mom would tell him. And when your father told you that your mother was his friend and not yours, did that, um, was that contrary to your experience as a child or did that seem to match your experience as a child? No, that definitely matched my experience. And over the years, did that appear to become less true or more true? More and more true, definitely in California. 
Now, were there other kinds of behavior of yours that your mother routinely told your father about? Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, usually in swimming or tennis. Uh, okay, why don't we start with swimming? What kind um, of, well, you practiced your swimming, didn't you? Yes. Did you work hard to learn swimming? I guess. You don't know? Yes, I worked hard. I mean, do you remember being lazy or do you remember training hard? No, I usually was training hard because either my mother or my father was there. When they weren't there, sometimes I was lazy. How did you like swimming? I hated the cold water. And were there things that you would try to do to avoid having to be in the cold water? Yes. And what were the things that you'd try to do? I would pretend to have lost my bathing suit. I would hide out in the uh, bathroom. I would... Uh, I would just do different things to stall or try not to get there. Or would you ever just cry and tell your mother you didn't want to continue to swim, you were too cold or you were uncomfortable? Or well, what? that was after I had already been swimming and the water was freezing. And I would just start crying because I couldn't take it. And what would she do if you were crying because you were uncomfortable? She would tell me to stop embarrassing her and uh, she would she would tell me that if you keep this up, we're going to go home, and I'm going to tell your father that, that we, were, we, we had to leave because you were crying, or she would put a towel over my head so no one would see her. She, was uh, very she would put a towel over your head so no one would see her? No, so no one would see me crying. Okay, because it was, embarrassed her? Yeah, she really, she really didn't like it when I cried uh, in public. And now, did she routinely uh, tell your father if you had not been participating in swimming to the extent she wanted you to? Yes. And would you get punished for that? Yes. Now, did she also tell on you with respect to tennis practice? When I didn't follow out the written orders that my dad had passed down. And would she tell on you having to do with just ordinary things during the day? Yes. Your Honor, I have another exhibit I'd like to mark 274. Mr. Menendez, does this appear to be a list of nine things? Yes. And who wrote that piece of paper? I did. And do you recognize what that piece of paper was for? Yes. And what was it for? Um, it was for my dad. And what is it? It's a list of all the things that my mother had me write down that I didn't do right. On a particular day? Yes. And what was going to happen with that list? She was going to give it to my dad. Read the top entry. What Eric did. And what's the first thing on it? Um, number one. Yeah, I know. What uh, is it? Uh, at home, Eric would not eat on. Okay. And number two is. At home, Eric would not go to sleep or get his pajamas on. And is it similar kinds of things all the way down? Yes. Now, when one of these lists of things that you did wrong was given to your father, uh, what would his reaction be? He would punish me. And uh, would the punishments vary depending on, well, whatever? Yes, it depended how bad the list was. This list wasn't as bad. As some? Yes. What punishment would you expect from this list? In this list, he would give me a long lecture, would probably slap me a couple of times, I don't know. And this is not belt no. punishment list? Okay. Now, I'd like to turn your attention, if I could, to when the family was in California. Well, strike that. I'd actually like to do something else first. I'd like to turn your attention to your relationship with your brother. Okay. You heard your brother testify that when you were quite small, probably around five, he did something to you. Yes. And how did you feel about him when those things were going on? I didn't like him. I didn't like him at all. I, uh, I didn't want those things to happen. And were, uh, were there other things that he was encouraged to do to you by your father that made you not like him also? Yes. Uh, what things would he do with your father's encouragement? Uh, Sustain. Well, did you hear your father egging him on to do things? Yes. What would he egg him on to do? When Lau and I were roughhousing, he would 
to allow where he should um, grab my joint so that it hurt most, where he should hit me, different things like that. And uh, did Lyle hit you and grab you when you were little? Um, yes. So um, was he your favorite person during those years? He wasn't my favorite person. Did he eventually become your favorite person in the family? Yes. Did your relationship with him over the years change? Yes. Now, you said that uh, based on these things that he did to you that he talked about, that you didn't like it and didn't like him. Did your attitude about those things and him change? Eventually. And what changed them? Do you understand uh, what I'm talking about? Yes. I, mean, I resented Lyle um, for a few years uh, because of the things that he had done to me. And once um, the things with Dad started to happen, then I felt real guilty about that. You felt guilty about what? Resenting Lyle. Why did you feel guilty about resenting Lyle when, I, I take it you mean the sexual things with your father were happening? Yes. So why did you feel guilty about resenting Lyle? Because I thought that this was supposed to be natural when my dad explained to me why it was supposed to be and Lyle didn't explain to me any of those things and so I thought that it wasn't. You thought it wasn't when Lyle did it and then when your father explained I realized that it was and I felt guilty for resenting Lyle. Okay. Now, did there come a time in your life when Lyle began to intercede on your behalf, particularly with your father? Yeah, there came a time when Lyle started to intercede for me with all kinds of things. Okay. Well, let's start out, though, with, with uh, this. Uh, was there a time that Lyle rescued you from drowning? Yes. And would you tell us how that came about? Uh, Dad, Lyle, and I, Dad took us out on the sunfish. He had this little uh, uh, sailboat for the lake. And the lake was, had a big ground part. And he would take us out into the middle of the lake. On this particular occasion, he wanted Lal and I, from the middle of the lake, to swim to shore. Now, before you go on, had your father told you scary stories about the lake? Yeah. I took you a while to get to that one. Yeah, a lot of choices. Okay, objection is overruled. Okay. Um, and this is not being offered for the truth, Your Honor, but for the witness's state of mind. What stories did your father tell you about the lake? He would tell me about the snapping turtles in the lake, which weren't really stories. I mean, they were true. Okay. But, you, uh, go ahead. Nothing. What would he tell you about the snapping turtles in the lake? He would just tell me about how the snapping turtles would bite people in the lake, and, and he would have a lot of fun while he was telling the stories, and, and then he would you know, jokingly try to push right after one of the stories, Lyle or I, into the water, and it, it was, wasn't that bad. It was just uh, scary when you actually had to be in the lake. Okay. Now, on this particular occasion when your brother rescued you, um, you said you were in the center portion of the lake and your father wanted you to swim from there to the shore. Yes, he wanted Lyle and I. Okay, and did you feel you could do that? I wasn't sure. I'd never done it before. Do you know how old you were? I, I think it was eight. Okay. Nine. Okay. So what happened? Um, he had Lyle go in first and and swim, and then after Lyle he had me. Uh, not after, but right after. And so Lyle swam, and I didn't want to, but he got me in the water, and I started to swim. How did he get you in the water? He pushed me in the water. I'm sorry? He pushed me in the water. He being your father? Yes. Okay, go on. And uh, about halfway there, I didn't feel I was going to make it. And by the time I got even more there, I, I, started to, uh, I started to swallow in water. And it made me real scared. And I was just pushing with the water. And then I, I thought of the snapping turtles, and I just panicked. And what did you do? I started screaming for help. And what happened? And Lyle. Uh, swam back over and, and grabbed me and lifted me up in the water and then just took me ashore and said it's going to be all right. So he was able to get you ashore? Yes. And uh, what happened after that? My dad sailed over to the shore and was not happy. 
What do you mean when you say your dad was not happy? He was extremely upset. He grabbed us, he threw us on the boat, and he told Lyle never to, never to do that again, that I should have been able to make it, and that I would have been able to make it. He just didn't give me a chance to make it, and that he shouldn't be you know, helping me like that. And then what happened? He took Lyle and I out onto the middle of the lake and had Lyle swim to the other side of the shore, and then had me swim to the other side. And what was that swim like for you? was hard. I knew I had no choice but to make it at this point, and I just did it real slow, and I did it. Now, this was after you had started competitive swimming, wasn't it? Yes. Were you afraid on when you were put into the water in the lake? Yes. And did you communicate that fear to your father? I don't remember doing so, but I'm pretty sure I did. Do you remember an earlier time in Muncie when you were having trouble in a swimming pool? Yes. When you were going under several times? Yes. How old were you then? It was before anything started happening with Dad, so I must have been five, maybe four. And was your father at the side of that pool when you were having trouble in the water? Yes. And eventually did somebody yeah a stranger just reached over and grabbed me and lifted me up out of the water because i was just screaming for help but not your father no my father wanted to see if i could make it do you recall an incident where your father uh physically assaulted you on the home tennis court yes do you, re do you know how old you were when that occurred no was it before or after your brother rescued you from the lake? Oh, it was much after. It was, I guess I must have been, I was starting to play tennis, so I was probably 11 or 12. <coughs> and by the time you were 11 or 12, did you feel that um, your brother was your friend? Yes, he had, uh, my relationship with my brother began to change when I was eight and nine, he was starting to protect me a lot from other kids, and I was still weary about the relationship, but... but Why were you leery about the relationship? Just because um, Lau and I would roughhouse a lot together, and he would pick on me a lot as the younger brother, and Dad would egg him on, and I sort of looked at Dad and Lyle as th the same when I was real young. Okay. Now, by the time you're 11 or 12, that's changed? Yeah, because he would do things for me, like at school or at, at different places. Um, can you remember, Mr. Menendez, the first time it occurred to you that your brother was on your side with respect to your parents? With respect to my parents? Yeah. Yes. And what was that incident, the first time you felt he was your ally? Uh, that was when I was 11. I, had, uh, we, I was studying for final exams in uh, sixth grade. And there was a house being built down the street and my parents had left the house. And so I went outside just to kick around the soccer ball with Velvet, uh, my dog, and uh, I heard some noises coming. And so I went down the street to see who it was and it was Brendan, um, a kid that I, I knew. And uh, Is, Was Brendan uh, a kid that you were friends with when you were at Hopewell, Hopewell Valley School? Yeah. Did he live in the neighborhood? Yeah. Was he, in fact, your only friend in the whole neighborhood? Yeah. Yes. Sustained the answer stricken. Did you have any friends besides Brendan in the neighborhood? No.